Of all the shows I've shot this year, I think this one's got me more excited than any of them. And the reason is, I think we're gonna learn some secrets. We're fishing on Pool 4 of the Mississippi, many times referred to as Red Wing. Now, we've shot shows here before, but the difference is, we're going out at night this time. And I'm fishing tonight with Brett King. Brett King is kind of a pioneer here of this late fall, early winter night bite up on Pool 4. We're gonna learn some secrets, and we're gonna show you how to get the next bite. Just Normally famous for its uncanny ability to offer some of the latest season river fishing possible, thanks to its water staying open because of a nearby upriver power plant, Pool 4 of the Mississippi out of Everett's Resort isn't just a one-trick pony when it comes to available techniques for catching big wintertime walleyes on open river water. <laughs> Built for speed, huh? <laughs> Built like me, short and squatty. <laughs> that was a fun one. That's why I fish this time of year. I have to get fish like that every time. I can see why you like fishing at night here. It's a beautiful night. Moon's coming up. It's going to get real bright here. They can see better then. They can see better. <laughs> and they will feed. Look at that one. He's got the feed bag on. There are several contributing factors to why this dead of night bite is very much alive. Oh, full moon. Full moon. And what's even cooler than the frosty night air is that what makes this bite special is as much of the fishery as it is the fishermen. That's a number. Mr. King, what do you got going on there? Greg's What's the word? Me a little bit. That feels all right. Get a net for you? Yeah. As if fishing under the cover of darkness with only the light of a full Mississippi River moon wasn't enough to change how we perceive river fishing for walleyes above water. <laughs> good one. Yeah. Hit it pretty good? Yeah, it did. It cracked it pretty good. <laughs> the simple fact that this technique is a night bite isn't the only difference between this late season artificial pitching technique and what you might be familiar with for more traditional walleye river fishing for what's going on below the water. Well, not the chunkiest one in the world, but he's got some length to him at least. Well, we got to get a few of these too. Where they hang around, the big ones hang around. That's right. <laughs> One of the things I'm looking at when I'm keying in on these late fall, early winter walleyes on the river systems, I'm looking for the rock and the riprap. And, and there's not all rock is created equal. What I'm looking for is a riprap that actually has access to some deeper water and maybe has a real nice feeding shelf on it. What I'm talking about by a feeding shelf is, you know, an initial drop of say four to six feet and then maybe a little flat that sticks out another five or six feet that those fish can go up on and feed on the shad. The other key to the everything on this is you also want to find some current. We have extremely low current late in the year, so any rock you can find that generally has a current sweep on it, because what they're doing is they're going up there and waiting for the food to be swept to them. So rock, deep water, current feeding shelves on the Mississippi River late in the fall is your formula for success. <laughs> Picked it up off the bottom, held it for a second. Get light on it here. Whack! Usually not bashful about it, are they? No, he wasn't bashful oh, at all. Boy, there he is. Oh, nice, oh, nice fish. Nice <laughs> fish. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like all it. Right. Look at there. We got like no rib worm left. <laughs> Look at that. Yummy, he says. I like a rib worm. It's right down to his stomach that opening is, with the tail. Yeah, the that. nice thing is, is the hook is right here. <laughs> Just perfect. That's a pretty typical run right there. Well, I like this run then. <laughs> Let's keep running. Let's keep running. <laughs> Get him back in the water here. Although you can keep them out for a while this time of year. It's plenty cool yeah, out. The water's yeah. cold, but we keep running with these. We'll keep running with them. <laughs> the next bite is presented by Mercury. Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Tracker boats, fish the finest. 
Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Berkeley, catch more fish. Part of the reason these late fall, early winter walleyes are so big is that the forage base that they have access to is shad. Sword. Well, it felt like a better one, but now, yeah, it's a pretty good one. And while shad itself isn't anything special, situationally, there are a lot of dying shad in the area as part of the normal winter die-off caused by cooling water temperatures. This, combined with the fact that the walleyes are already fattening up for a long, cold winter and for the spawn in the spring. All right, well, that is steep bank. It's makes not only catching bigger walleyes possible, but with a much greater level of consistency. Well, you, I was standing up here and you really didn't say much. And Well, you know, when you stick them on them steep drops like that, a lot of times they'll swim right at you. Sure. You know, so you don't realize how, how big they are until they get out away from the bank a little bit. Well, it took me a while to get back here anyway, so that's good. <laughs> uh, got one, Keith. Pretty good. Oh, ways. It's a good one? Yeah, it's a decent fish. <laughs> big is he? Uh, looks like a five pounder. <laughs> I see how big he is now. <laughs> oh, look at that fatty. Well, that might even be better than five, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice, young man. Very nice. You gotta love this, don't you? Oh. Isn't this something? Look at how he go engulfed that thing. Goodness. He must have pounded her yeah, pretty good. He huh? about took the rod out of my hand. <laughs> Felt like he hit it with a baseball bat. <laughs> Look at the gut. Got to imagine that dying or, or dead shad and stuff. Yep, it's, <laughs> it's coming through the dam system, and they're just gorging for fall. I mean, that's not an extremely long fish, but look at all, he's just I fat know. all yeah, the way down through just very, to the very tail solid. There. Very healthy. <laughs> <laughs> this bite definitely produces a chance, not only for big fish, but a lot of fish. And I got one. Uh -huh. He was a little ways off from the shore. However, night or day, this is still a river, which means varying current strings, wooded and rocky structures, all of which mean feel and retrieve are everything for getting more bites. Here he comes. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> all right. yeah, the old net's got a little frost on it. Doesn't it? <laughs> it's a little frozen up. <laughs> and in this case, for Brett and Keith, dealing with these factors are a bit different than you might expect. 23 degrees right now. I think it's a little cooler right here than that. Yeah. Oh, it seemed like when we moved to this spot, it was like, also my hands were a lot cooler. So what do you think of this fall plastic stuff, Keith? <laughs> so much fun. It's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's a very addicting bite to me. You just, you gotta have that patience and wait for that thump, but man, when you get it, it's awesome. Right? <laughs> I mean, it, it is a really cool bite, Brett. I mean, the thing that's really surprising me is when I fish plastics, typically you think of very aggressive movements yeah. and that. This is just ungodly slow. I mean, just- Dead fall. Just dead fall, just letting that, that tail just barely move in the water and Here's but the, when they decide to hit it, it it's, yeah, it's, they, it's, they're plenty aggressive hitting yep. it. So a little bit different, but guy, yeah, really fun. <laughs> well, I hope these walleyes are having as much fun as we are. <laughs> I hope so too, but I doubt it. <laughs> Fishing information from real fishing experts presented by Amsoil. You know, I pride myself in being a pretty adaptive fisherman in that, you know, if I get out in the boat with somebody and they're doing something a little bit different and uh, I try and pick up what they're doing, learn from it. But I tell you what, this night fishing, Brett actually, he's definitely on it. And, and what I analyzed over the hours that we were together is it's a lot of small things that make a big difference when you're talking about this technique we're doing so let me talk a little bit about some of the tackle that we're using as far as rod and reel you, you want to use a really really sensitive rod for this and I tell you it's not so much to feel the bites it's to feel when that jig touches the bottom because we're in very very snaggy situations a lot of riprap a lot of rock so when that jig is cruising along and just barely ticks that bottom you got to know to slowly lift that jig up 
up and get it sweeping again. So real sensitive rod. Uh, I like to use about a six foot rod. We're using fairly light jigs tonight because it's, it's calm out. We can go all the way down to an eighth ounce jig, just pretty much any kind of jig you want as long as eighth ounce. As far as the tails we're using, you need to have something with some kind of an action tail. This is a little rib worm here. Any kind of plastics that got that action tail, something that real easily moves in the water because they're just drifting along. So it just gives it that little bit of movement. I think actually a little bit of sound and water displacement to actually draw that fish in. As far as colors, uh, purple was really good for us. Um, uh, they call it a, a pro blue around the Mississippi. It's just got a blue tint to the to the tails. Uh, a lot of chartreuse uh, ending tails on them, but action tails were very, very good. I tell you, one of the key things though, I think that, that we were both using is some kind of very visible line. I'm using solar sensation. He's using orange sensation. It's something that shows up real good in uh, spotlights again, so you can see when that jig hits the bottom. The other thing is, is this is a place where I really suggest monofilament. I'm a big proponent of no stretch lines for jigging. I love Fireline. I know, love Nanofill. But in this case, those kind of no stretch lines can be, actually be a detriment, I think, because they move the jig too much. And by that I mean I'm using six pound test line here. It's got some stretch in it. It's gonna get a little bit of bow as it sweeps down the line. When you move your rod tip, it's moving the, the jig very, very slowly. It's that important. So moving that jig slow, being able to feel when it's just ticking the bottom with a sensitive rod, you'll feel the bite. It's a great, great bite. Set the hook and reel those fish in. Very specific equipment for a very cool technique. Having the right equipment for the right job is certainly going to have you ready for catching big late season walleyes on the Mississippi River. But how you put that gear to work is every bit as important. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. is a nice one, Brett. Oh, we're getting Very there. nice. <laughs> this is why I love fishing in the fall. By the light of the silvery moon, straight overhead. <laughs> I think there's a song about that, yeah, isn't yeah. there? That is a quality fish there. No doubt. I mean, that. Just a great, great Mississippi River walleye right there. Pretty spoiled on this fishery. <laughs> well, it just seems, you know, that, that it takes this nighttime to get these bigger bigger fish like that. Yeah, it no, does. When they get active at night, that's yeah, when they want to feed. When the water clears up like this deep into the winter, I mean, they, they seem to prefer to feed at night. Spoiled or not, the particular cadence and retrieve that Brett King and Keith Cavias are using. It feels pretty decent, old Brett. Got one hooked up. <laughs> I haven't seen him yet. Is what is making the real difference in triggering these walleyes to bite. Just pounded it, too. Yes. Isn't that amazing Scorched how hard it. they can hit that bait when you get it in there? While minimizing their number of snags as much as possible. It looks like a good oh, one. Yeah, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Appropriately for real success under the cover of this imminent winter darkness. The key is good visualization. You just glide it along the bottom like that. Yep. Yeah, they do not want it moving too much, it's, do they? It's really weird how they just, if you let it go to the bottom or sit on the bottom, they don't pick it up. No. Nope. A lot of times when you're jigging, you're feeling for that bottom bite. But yep. man, they just, they want it just creeping along that bottom. Yes. They yeah. like it when it's just hovering. You know, just keep it just off the bottom as best you can. And, and uh, they just come up and wall of it, don't they? It's you just, know, it, it's it an feels amazing. like you're yeah. holding it slow. You're holding it still, but that current is just ever so yep. slowly it's drifting in front of them. You don't miss the bite. When you get the bite, <laughs> but if you you don't get the jig in the right place, you don't get the bite. <laughs> well, the jig was in the right place for this one, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, it was. When you're pitching jigs in this cold water like this, how you control and move that jig through the water is, it's absolutely crucial. There's a really fine line between getting snagged and getting bit, and what I'm really trying to visualize that I'm doing is I'm swimming that jig just inches off the bottom. And if it's falling and sweeping, I just let it go. It's painfully slow to do. But it's almost, if you move that jig too much, chances are you're not gonna get bit. And you can really do a lot of different things in controlling this through the rod. I'm gonna throw out here and show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna throw right in tight to shore in the inches of water, and I'm immediately gonna take up the slack and be ready for a hit. A lot of times I'll get topped right up in inches of water. And then I'm just gonna let the jig fall and sweep. Hits the bottom, I pick up the rod slowly, gently. Reel up, back down, chase the line down so I'm somewhat taut. Hits the bottom, pick up lightly, spin the reel handle, and I'm just waiting and waiting and waiting, hit the bottom. If I know it's falling and sweeping and not on the bottom, I don't do anything, I just let it go. And as soon as I see that line jump, 
flinch or I feel the rod about tore out of my hand, I absolutely cross their eyes. Oh! Good one? Yeah, I got her. It's, yeah. How big is it? Feels pretty good. Oh, right man, girl. The rocks, huh? Yeah. It's close to shore. Yeah, boy, did she crack it. How's it feel? Oh, it feels great. <laughs> feels exactly like what I'm here for. Oh, oh boy, that's yeah. a good one. Look at that one. Come here, girl. Come on, Come get her. here, girl. I got her. <laughs> yes. Oh, man, Brad. Nice. <laughs> Look at that beast. Look at this beast. <sighs> you know, my knees are shaking. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, even after doing all look, this. As I've caught, my knees are shaking. There you go, man. There's your fish. Oh, come here, baby. Boy, that's got to be a got easy seven, eight pounder there. Yeah. Look at the gut on that thing. You know what we call that one there, don't you? <laughs> What's that? King size. <laughs> uh, I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> oh, man, is that a good fish? Yeah. Just beautiful shape, too. Look at how got the fin right up and everything like that. Being pretty picturesque, isn't what she? A, what a gorgeous fish. Yeah. Well, get her back in so All she right. don't get too tired. She had a hard battle. We want her laying eggs in the right, spring. Girl. Oh, man, look at the size of her. She'll lay some good eggs this spring, yeah, won't she? She will. She fought a hard battle. We'll revive her a little bit here. Oh, there she goes. There she goes. Right by your line again. <laughs> Maybe I can catch her again. <laughs> She's back in there for somebody uh, to catch again. Nice job, yes. man. Leading information on tackle and techniques to make you a better fisherman. Presented by Mercury. I'm here with Dirk Bjornstad, prop expert here at Mercury Marine. And Dirk, we've got an aluminum prop and a stainless steel prop here. What are the differences, advantages, disadvantages? Well, that's right. Here what we got is an aluminum three blade LACMAX propeller. Generally what aluminum props are known for in the marketplace is really a good blend of value and performance, decent right. top end speed, decent hole shot for a pretty inexpensive price. It's kind of the ham sandwich of propellers. Gets the job done, nothing really wrong with it. However though, people who are really serious about spending a lot of hours on the water, very serious about their fishing, typically are gonna step up to a stainless steel propeller. And really there's, there's two reasons for that. One is the stainless prop. Mercury uses a 15.5 proprietary stainless steel alloy. It's about five times as strong as the aluminum propeller. So anytime you were to run into something underwater, you might see a little nick in the, right. in the stainless steel blade where it could take the ear of the aluminum propeller clean off. Now, typically, if you're putting a lot of hours in over a season, you may go through one aluminum prop uh, season just due to wear and tear on the on the propeller. With the stainless prop, due to that extra strength, you may have that prop for the entire life of the of the engine. Another concern that we uh, often hear, particularly in the uh, in the Midwest or in the Southeast, where boaters are boating in a lot of shallow water areas, is I don't want to run stainless. There's a chance it's going to hurt my drive. Right. Well, with the Flow Torque 2 drive system, that drive sleeve is designed to absorb any kind of underwater impact at around 1,500 to 2,000 foot pounds of torque, right where the any potential gear damage could. Occur. It's going to sacrifice itself, protect your lower unit, but still give you the opportunity to get home safely. So for the casual angler, uh, probably this one, and for those that spend a lot of time on the water, the same. Absolutely. Is... And if you really care about getting the best hole shot and best top end you can possibly get, absolutely stainless is the way to go. Using a deadly slow fall, carefully hovering jigs and artificials just off the bottom for late fall, early winter walleyes is giving professional tournament anglers Keith Kivias and Brett King an excellent opportunity to demonstrate some secrets. Oh boy, look at this one. <laughs> of how not only to extend a big Mississippi River walleye bite into the latest reaches of the season. Oh, look at that gutty thing. <laughs> gotta be a female, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Legs. It's gotta be dang here for. Pounder. Yeah, and it's only probably 20, 22 <laughs> inch or <Jeez. laughs> But also how this night bite at Red Wing, or pool four of the Mississippi, is unique in so many ways. Hurry up, Brett. All right. There's like, there's like three quarters of the way back to the boat. Oh, he's a good one, Brett. Get the net. Get the net, man. Oh, nice. He's a good one. Look at there. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> on the ice. I guess that's, that's ice fishing or what? <laughs> I was going after that one no matter what. Oh, that was a good Whoa. fish. Look at that one. Man, and I was kind of just, I got it quite a ways offshore. And 
about three quarters of the way back on already. It was probably out there, probably. Nice. 12, 14 feet deep. And Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> that is definitely one we're here for there. Well, I'm so glad you invited me, Brad, because I tell you, I fished uh, Red Wing a lot both 20 years ago and, and even recently, but I've never really got on this good night bite, even though I've really heard about it. So just really, really great fishing because it, it just seems like there's a, consi a a bigger consistent size walleye than maybe I've ever seen that red Yeah, wing. when they go nocturnal like that, it's, it's really a blast. It takes a little bit to get onto it, and uh, but the persistence pays off and the, the overall quality of fish is just unbelievable. Right? It, is, it is unbelievable. Well, thanks again, Brett, because Nothing better than moonlit walleyes at Red Wing. What a great trip to the Mississippi River. It's a lot of fun. I'm glad you came. Hopefully you'll come back and do it again. What a great fish. Here we go, buddy. I'll get you back in here. Back to your Red Wing home. There we go. Kind of reminds me of that Ghostbusters deal, you know, where they're out there and they're like shooting up at the sky, you know, like we're the walleye busters. Don't cross the lines, we're gonna be done, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, huh. <laughs> oh, and he's gone. Escape artist. This is the time of day, or the time of night, I guess, the time of the day. It could be night or day. So uh, I'm wondering why the old guy has to be up here on the anchor. Get your fresh fish here. Get your fresh fish. The next bite would like to thank Brett King and Everts Resort, Brett's home base for guiding, and just five minutes from Red Wing, Minnesota. Everts Resort has the only year-round open ramp on Pool 4 of the Mississippi River.